Number 37. A 500 kilogram dragster accelerates from rest to a final speed of 110 meters per second in 400 meters, which is about a quarter of a mile, and encounters an average frictional force of 1200 newtons. What is its average power output in watts and horsepower if this takes 7.30 seconds? All right. So first thing, let's start with the question. What's it asking us to calculate? It's asking us to calculate the power, right? So power, I have power in a whole bunch of equations down here. So, I mean, it doesn't really, all of them can work uh, relatively well. Um, I th I'm going to do it by using um, this equation right here, okay? Power is equal to work divided by time. So I'm going to do power is equal to work divided by time. All right. So now in order for me to calculate power, I need to know the amount of work being produced by an object and the time over which it is producing that uh, work, okay? So, uh, what does it tell me? It tells me that the, what's the average, or it's asking me what's the average power if it takes 7.35 seconds. So guess what I know about the time down here? Remember, time has to be in seconds. I actually know the time, right? So really my power here is gonna be equal to some watt value divided by 7.30 seconds. So guess what? If I can just calculate the amount of work done, then I can calculate my power. So my question no longer is about power. My question is about, well, how much work is being done? How much work is being done by the dragster? All right. So let's take a look at the information that's given. So it says that, all right, the dragster has this mass and it goes from rest to a final speed of 110 meters per second. So now I know, right, if I'm trying to calculate work, I know work is in terms of joules, right? And work is basically just a type of applied energy. So therefore, I'm thinking, well, what's the energy value when this dragster is in motion? What's the energy concept? Well, the energy concept is kinetic energy, all right? That's the energy of motion. So let me now calculate kinetic energy, right? I should say change in kinetic energy, right? Um, because that's really what I'm most concerned about. Would be equal to one half right, m times then the uh, final value squared minus the initial value squared, all right, meaning of the velocity, okay? So now in order to find the change in kinetic energy here, it would simply be one half times the mass of the object, which was 500 kilograms, that's the dragster, multiplied by its final velocity in meters per second, which was 110, that's squared, minus its initial, which it said it was at rest, so that's zero. Okay, and now we can find the average change in kinetic energy here. So let's see. So we have 0.5 times 500 multiplied by 110 squared. So now this works out to be 3. Point, and I'll do three significant figures, 3.03, 3.03 times 10 raised to the, looks like six, right? Times 10 raised to the six, and that's in terms of joules. Okay. So this is the kinetic energy that the dragster has at the end, right, of this quarter mile. All right, so pretend that this is the dragster. It's a cool-looking dragster. And it's going to travel right some distance. All right, and it says that it's going to travel 400 meters. And once it gets to its final location over here, it has a speed, right, of uh, 110 meters per second. And its energy right now, its kinetic energy is... 3.03 .03 times 10 to the 6 joules. Now, is this kinetic energy exactly equal to the amount of work that the dragster uh, produced? Well, not exactly, right? Because, and why am I saying that? Well, because it also had to overcome friction. It also had to overcome friction. So not only does it have this energy value at the end, but in order to get to this energy value, it had to overcome frictional forces all along the way here, right? So hmm, how do I find the energy then that the dragster uh, produced to overcome just the friction? Well, let's see what we're given in terms of friction. They tell us that the average frictional force, so let me write that over here, the average frictional force was going to be 1,200 newtons. And they also told us how long that this dragster was driving for, right? So uh, it's encountering this force of 1,200 newtons over 
400 meters. So they also gave me a distance, right, of 400, 400 meters. Hmm. So how is force and distance related to energy? Right? How, how are they related? Oh, look at over here, right here on the right-hand side. This is how they're related, right? Where the work is equal to the force applied over the distance in which the object travels multiplied by the cosine between the two vectors, right, force and distance. So in this particular case, right, the work basically, so, you know, the sign here would be negative because the force vector, the, well, frictional force is pointing in that direction, but the uh, dragster is moving in that direction. So those vectors are opposed, right, 180 degrees. So therefore, this theta here would be 180, and the cosine of 180 is negative 1, right? So the work here would be a negative value, meaning that friction is taking work out of the system, all right? And that should make sense, right? It's taking work out of the system, but, which is all true, but remember, I'm interested in calculating the power produced by the dragster. So the dragster had to put in an additional amount of work, right? So although the work due to friction is negative, the work that the dragster had to perform to overcome that friction would be equal but opposite in direction, right? The force would have to be in the exact opposite direction. So therefore, the force that the car is exerting and the distance that the car is traveling are both in the same direction here, all right? So just keep that in mind. So now it's going to be a positive value, okay? So the work that the dragster has to perform to overcome this frictional uh, force over 400 meters would simply be 1,200 multiplied by 400 times the cosine of zero, okay? So the work now, the additional work that the dragster had to put in is going to be 1,200 times 400. And that works out to be 4.8. So 4.8 times 10 raised to the, what do we got here? 3, 4, 5 times 10 raised to the 5, and that's joules. Now, think about the whole picture. The energy that the car had at the end of the 400 meters, its kinetic energy was 3.03 .03 times 10 to the 6 joules. But in order to get to this energy value, it had to also overcome the work of friction, right, or the energy due to friction. So therefore, to find now the total energy that the dragster had to produce, guess what we're going to do with these two values? We're going to then add these two values together. Okay, and if we add these two values, that almost looks like a multiplication sign. If we add these two values together, we'll find the total work or the total energy done. Okay, so when we add them, let's see what we get. So we got 3.03 .03 times 10 to the 6 plus 4.8 times 10 to the 5th. Oh, wait, plugged it in wrong. 3.08 times, no, 3.03 .03 times 10 to the 6th plus 4.8 times 10 to the 5th. That's what happens when you rush. So here we have 3.5, 3.51, right? So let me just make that a little neater. 3.51 times 10 raised, and it should be to the 6th. Yes, to the 6th. And that is now in terms of joules. So this is now finally the total work done, okay? This is now the total work done. Total work, there's no T in work, is there? <laughs> total work done by the dragster. All right, so now we can take this value and plug that in for the work there, okay? To find then the total power produced by the dragster. So this is 3.51 times 10 to the sixth all divided by 7.30, since it took that amount of time to produce that amount of work. And therefore, now we'd have, just take that and divide it by 7.3. And we get a power value of 4.81 times 10 raised to the 5. Times 10 raised to the 5, and that is in terms of now watts. Okay, so that is the power in watts. That takes care of that part, all right. And then they want us to now find the, the horsepower. So look at the bottom right-hand side, guys. I have a one horsepower is equal to about 746 watts. All right. So therefore, I can just do a simple conversion. I'll do it on the upper left. All right. So we got 
4.81 times 10 to the fifth watts, multiplied then by watts on the bottom, horsepower on the top, and there's about 746 watts for every horsepower. So it's basically a division, right? So let's take 4.81 times 10 to the fifth and divide it by 746, and you get 645. So we get 645 horsepower. All right? Nice. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. That would be awesome. And uh, yeah, I look forward to helping you guys with the next question. All right, take care.